Okay, in this video, we're going to quickly go over the polynomial.5a warm-up, a couple examples of the I pattern, sketching graphs, and then using your roots in order to come up with the equation of a quadratic, or in the example of part B, a cubic polynomial. So we'll go through these quickly, I hope. I to the 75th, our first example here, that's going to be I squared. You need to find the sum power, and you're going to pull out one I, right? So this is just one I. Then I squared to some power has got to add up to 75. Uh, 74 if we take this one I out. And so if you divide 74 by 2, uh, then you get 37. And so this is to the 37th power up here. And so then I squared to the 37th. Well, I squared is negative 1. Negative 1 to an odd power is still a negative 1. So this is going to equal a negative I. And then we have I to the 333rd. That's also negative. So that's going to be i squared to some power times an i out here. And so as we pull that out, that's got to add up to a total of 332. So 150 gets you to 300. Uh, 32 is 16. So that's going to be 146 up top here. So 146 is a power. This time we have i squared versus a negative 1 to an even. So that's a positive 1. And so this is just equal to positive i. And then we got a little operations of i over here. And so if we square out the right side, 6i is going to be on the left still. On the right side, you're going to have 9i squared. i squared is a negative 1, so this is a negative 9. So you have 6i times a negative 9. So this is just going to equal a negative 54i. Um, you're asked to sketch... A, group, a graph given the following information. So we have one real linear root and four complex roots. So obviously there's lots of different ways that can happen. Um, I'm just going to choose an x-intercept. That's going to take care of that one linear root. And so then as I sketch my graph here, because of this piece, excuse me, because of this piece of the complex roots, you know that your graph is going to have two little spots where you have your parabola opening away from the x-axis. That gives us four complex roots. Uh, for the second example, this time I have two real roots, but one of them is linear, and one of them is a double root. So choose one. It doesn't matter which one you're going through. It's going to have to bounce off it. And so obviously lots of ways to do this. Linear root through one of them. Uh, since I have two complex roots, I need to have a parabola opening away, and then you're going to bounce off that other one. Um, this piece here gives us the two complex roots. So as we count up the degree, there's one, two, three, four, five. So one at the linear and then two for each of the complex pieces. So that means my degree is going to be equal to five. And then for the other one, it's actually kind of the same here. We have a linear root. We have a double root. So that's one in this spot. And then uh, you're going to have uh, two at the double root, and then also two at the complex root. So that's also a degree of five. Now some more newer stuff that we learned in our previous lesson, we have these write a polynomial based upon the roots. So I'm going to move this up a little bit so that we can have some more space. Remember what we need to find here is both the sum and the product. So as we find the sum, as we take a look at each of these first two examples, they're, they're the same on purpose here for A and B because there's this additional x minus 2, or x equals negative 2, rather. Um, so these are all conjugates, 2 plus 4i and 2 minus 4i. So therefore, the sum is just going to be 4. That's nice and simple. The product takes a little bit of work. And so again, remember that you set up a generic rectangle. Um, it's kind of sloppy, but you get the idea. So we have 2 plus 4i, and we have 2 minus 4i. So this is a minus 4i over here. And then as you fill in each spot, you're going to have a positive 4, you have a 8i, a negative 8i, and then a negative 16i squared. And so uh, the negative 8i and positive 8i cancel. This 16i squared turns into a positive 16. And so this product all turns into just uh, 20 because you have 4 and 16, which is equal to 20. Once you have that, writing the quadratic is pretty straightforward if you know the rule. Um, x squared is just going to be a 1x squared. It's the opposite of the sum times x and then just plus the product. And there you're done. So that is the quadratic equation that gets you this sum and product. 
Now, part B, I've added in a third root. So you have two complex roots and one linear root. And so what you need to do is, in a, in a problem from scratch, you would need to do this process with the sum and the product with this complex pair and then multiply by the factor from the x minus 2, or x equals negative 2, excuse me. But since I started you with that part to speed it up, the process, now what you're going to do is we already know the, the um, quadratic that comes from 2 plus or minus 4i. So what we need to do now is create a 3 by 2 generic rectangle where you're going to put your x squared minus 4x plus 20 from part a and then on bottom, or on the left side rather, from the x equals negative 2, you're going to put x plus 2. And so since you have x plus 2 there, now as you write that in, uh, you fill in all your spots. This is going to be an x cubed. This is going to be a 2x squared. This is going to be a negative 4x squared. This would be a negative 8x. This would be a 20x. And then the bottom right looks like you'll have a 40. And now you just combine your like terms to write your cubic. And so we start with an x cubed. And it looks like a negative 2x squared, a positive 12x, and a positive 40. And that would be your quadratic. Or sorry, that would be your cubic. Um, for part C now, moving on. Um, added piece of information is that it passes through this point 2, 7. And so we know our roots. And so right away we can say our equation is going to be y equals x squared. Uh, the sum of these two things is a positive 5 and the product is a negative 14. So this is going to be x squared minus 5x minus 14. And that would be the gen general equation that goes through these two roots, but I want the specific one that goes through 2, 7. Now that means that what we're going to try to do is solve for the a value that's out front. But you have to be careful because what you really need is these parentheses around that group. That will allow you to come up with the formula. You also could have started with y equals the a out front of your factors of x plus 2 and x minus 7, and you'd get to the same spot. You're going to plug 7 in for y. Um, I'm trying to solve for a, and 2 squared is 4. 5 times 2 is 10 you're subtracting, and minus 14. So this looks like it's going to be 7 equals a times a negative 20, or a equals a negative 7 over 20. And so that would be what you would plug in to uh, both of the, either of these a values. If the question asks for a standard form, obviously you have to answer it like this. Uh, you would want to either leave the a out with the parentheses when you plug that in, or you might want to distribute that a into everything. I, I think it's probably easier to leave the a of negative 7 over 20 out front of that whole group instead of having to distribute a negative 7 over 20 into each of these terms. Either way, uh, be careful. Um, if you have it in standard form, it's not just the a in front of the x squared. It's a stretch factor. And the reason I emphasize the word factor is because it multiplies by everything that comes out of your quadratic.